Okay, so we're going to have a look at um, how to set up a wormery and what you can use the worm compost and the worm juice for. So first of all, um, what is a wormery? So this is a wormery here. It's a piece of equipment which is used to make compost with worms as the key workers. Obviously there'll be bacteria and fungi breaking things down in there as well, but your key workers are your worms. So that's what a wormery is. So let's look at our equipment. First of all, we need somewhere to house our worms, which is sheltered, nice and warm, and where we can give them food. So that's, um, we'll have a look at that in detail in a minute. Then we need some worms. So I've brought some worms which are hiding away um, at the moment, but they will be revealed. You can maybe just see a few of them there. So we've got some worms which I've taken from my wormery at home, but if you buy one of these wormeries, and we'll put the link in the comments section, they send you some composting worms. So um, I'll talk about the different kinds of worms that you use later as we're setting it up. This kit also came with some lime because there is a tendency sometimes, especially if you add a lot of fruit like lemon peel and orange peel, it can become quite acid. So this came with it, a little bit of lime to change the pH from acid to alkaline if it becomes a little bit too acidic. And then the other thing we need uh, to make our worms feel nice and at home is some kind of bedding. So I'm classing this, these two here as a type of bedding. I'll talk about those later when we set it up. So that's our bedding. And then obviously we need some food and it's mainly kitchen scraps that you feed to worms when you've got a wormery. And then I've got my little sprayer here um, for dampening down things because worms like damp conditions. So that's our equipment. Um, we've got some worm compost here that's been made earlier, which I'll show you as well at the end. Um, you can, well, I'll show you now actually. Uh, it's very dry, this, this has been hanging around for a while, but this is worm compost. There's a little tea bag here that you can see that uh, because the outside's plastic, that hasn't broken down. So you get these little tea bag skeletons if you put tea bags in that aren't organic. If you buy organic ones, they're made from compostable paper, so you wouldn't get any skeletons. Um, we've got a bit of a, what was a bit, oh yeah, a bit of a banana. Bananas take a long time to break down, you can see, so you can still see a bit of a banana skin. But the rest of it, there's a bit more banana, is pretty unrecognisable. Um, so we class this as humus, you know, you can't tell what it was. A um, bit of paper towel there. But uh, yeah, so this is the worm compost that you get at the end. But I say this has dried out a lot. I'll show you my other worm compost that's fresher um, and you'll see how much more moist it is. So let's go back to our equipment. So this wormery here cost uh, around £70 and there's some more trays that you can add as well but we're just going to look at the basic two shelf setup of a wormery. Uh, it's this one is made from recycled plastic, there's a little emblem on the top so environmentally I suppose it's better than you know uh, manufactured, new manufactured plastic so it is recycled. Um, okay so let's look at the, com the components so the bottom bit there is just to provide um, some elevation. Uh, so sometimes there'll be a couple of little legs coming from the bottom, but in this case, we've just got this stand to raise it up so that we can access the little tap um, on this lower layer here, because this is where our liquid feed will come out. Okay, so we've got our stand or our legs that are elevating it. And then our first layer is, <laughs> this is where it will come out. They do fit very snugly, so here we go, <laughs> so that you can keep them nice and warm. So this is our first layer, and this is just a sump basically, where we've got our um, opening there, so that we can, as the liquid collects, we can then open the tap and collect it as a liquid feed. OK, 
Okay, so that's our lower layer to collect the liquid, or worm liquid, worm juice, worm fertiliser. Then this top layer, or top shelf, um, is just porous at the bottom, so obviously all the liquid can run down into the lower layer, and so because we don't want this to become saturated and wet, the worms wouldn't like that. Um, and it allows lots of air in as well. So that's our uh, second shelf above the sump. So we're going to set this up now um, as a new wormery. As I said, when you buy one of these, they do send you the worms separately, making sure you're in when they come. Um, but I just uh, went to my wormery at home and dug some out, although it's very hard to find them this time of year because it's so cold. They're not as active and they've burrowed right down into the center and there weren't as many as there are usually in the summer but i did find some all righty so like any house we need a nice warm bed to sleep in so our first layer on the bottom is going to be our bedding somewhere where the worms can burrow down and shelter now you can use a variety of materials you can use some multi-purpose compost or coir um, that's quite fine. So, you know, it's just like worms go down into soil. You just want to provide somewhere where they can burrow down. So you can use some old compost. It doesn't have to have a lot of nutrients or anything. In fact, that's better if it hasn't. Um, or you can use shredded newspaper. So I'm gonna use a mixture of the two. You want this layer to be about that thick. I guess that's around five, six, seven centimeters, about that thick. So I'm gonna sprinkle this in first doesn't matter if it's a bit lumpy and I'm going to add some of my and obviously you could use shredded paper that's been through a paper shredder that would be even better because it'd be a lot finer because you know obviously newspaper will rot down into organic matter it will turn into humus eventually okay and then the key thing is here it's got to be damp the compost as well has got to be damp so I'm giving it a good wet the compost as well to give it all a really good soak obviously you don't want it too wet but it's got to be damp it's got to be damp and then probably could do the little bit more but just to save time so i'm just gonna mix it around a little bit so i've got a bit of the compost above the paper as well because the worms will actually eat a little bit of the paper as well to be honest recycle that okay so that is our bedding, our bedding layer at the bottom. So that's their bedroom. So now we've got to add our worms. Now, it's particular types of worms that you use in a wormery. It's not the, uh, the ones that make the worm casts on your lawn. Oh, actually, it's more than I thought. That's quite good. You can see some bits of that's a bit of paper, probably bits of eggs, egg shells in here because I always add a bit of egg shell. Um, but you can see these worms. Okay, so our main type of worm are tiger worms, which are stripy. And there's a couple of different types of tiger worm. One's a red, more of a red stripe, and one's a more rusty brown stripe, but they're, they're generally called tiger worms. And then you've got other kinds of worms which are called dendras or dendrobenas, which have more of a blue colour and are not as stripy. I'm not sure if those are dendras, to be honest, because I'm not a worm expert, but they definitely don't look as stripy. So dendras and tiger worms are your main two to remember for RHS theory. Um, but you also have something called red wrigglers as well, which are like a blood red colour. Uh, I couldn't really see any that are obviously, a, you know, just plain red, but you can have red wrigglers, tiger worms and dendras, which are more of a blue colour. He's escaping now. OK, so obviously they're trying to get away from the light because they don't like to be in a light place. So, as I say, this is from my wormery. So there's a few things that haven't decomposed very well. I'm going to add some of this. Uh, organic matter in with them. I'm not going to separate them from it because it, there's no need. There's probably, we probably could do with a few more worms to be honest. Um, 
it was hard to find them because it's been so cold. But if we keep them in the classroom and it's nice and warm in here, you know, they'll think it's summertime and hopefully they'll then lay a load of eggs and have a load of babies. So they, they will uh, obviously increase in number naturally. So we put our worms in, they're in their bedding and now we need to give them some food. So as I said, kitchen scraps are ideal because they're already very thin and cut up and they're quite moist. Um, you could also add tea bags, uh, organic tea bags. Um, you, can add, you could add a bit of grass from the garden if you didn't have any food and you didn't want them to starve, but usually it is kitchen scraps. Um, you could put a bit of shredded newspaper in again that was damp because they will actually eat that as well as use it as bedding. And I think for now, because we haven't got lots of worms, that is enough. The key thing with feeding them is it's really easy to overfeed. And I read somewhere they, they recommended a lunchbox full of food once a week. And I think that's about right. And you spread it very thinly. In fact, I'd probably leave this a couple of weeks and then have a look and then just see if there's anything left. And then if it's nearly all gone, then add some more. So it has to be done really carefully. If you overfeed, it upsets all the balance. So they've got their food. Um, the last part is uh, just to cover them up because we want this to remain moist. So what I usually use is I just put some damp newspaper on top like a lid. So if I just wet all this, it will all kind of stick together as a lid. You could use a piece of, uh, I don't know, wool, a bit of a woolly jumper, something like that, it doesn't really matter. But it will keep them dark while they're feeding because they do like to be in the dark. It will keep them from drying out as well. So just something damp to keep it covered. Keeps them warm as well. So we'll just place that over the top. Give it another little bit of a spray. So, okay, that's just our top layer. And that is now ready to go. So we just obviously place our lid over the top keep them dry. So this particular wormery isn't designed to go outside because it's not waterproof so the rain could get in and you know they, they drown basically. The best place would be something like a garage or in the classroom is ideal. They like uh, for higher temperatures so 18 to 25 degrees C is apparently the optimum range. If you go below 10 they really slow down and they don't they sort of go dormant and burrow down down into the layers rather than eating and if it goes over 30 um, it can kill them um, you know they, they just don't uh, carry on with their composting so how do they work they eat those little fragments of kitchen scraps um, they mix it in their body as it goes through and they they poo out gorgeous little if you look at it under microscope like little round balls of goodness you can't really see it um, with the naked eye but and they're quite shiny because there's lots of gums that help to bond the pieces together and when they are sort of near soil too they actually take some rock fragments and mix those in with the organic matter so sometimes um, people would add a, a bit of grit sand or sand to it as well because that they, they will eat a bit of sand in with it or eggshell, I think that really helps um, crush up your eggshells and sprinkle those on. They will disappear also. So they basically um, eat the organic matter and then poop it out as, as ready-made humus. And the thing about worm compost is it's really rich in nutrients. The downside is you don't get a lot produced of the um, solid compost, but you do get liquid formed, which you can decant off and then use as a liquid feed. You normally dilute it again, one to 10. You don't usually use it neat, so you need to dilute it. So it's a good instant liquid feed. Um, the compost that you make, I tend to use it for potting on house plants because it's really rich. It's got no weed seeds in it, so I'm not gonna get weeds growing. It feels really moist as well. Um, it's too good to be spreading on the garden unless you've got a really small garden. It does well in a very small space. Um, it's good by your back door if your kitchen scraps, you don't have far to walk. And I think that is everything about a wormery. <laughs>